Welcome to Free Media, I'm Robbie Suave. And I'm Amber Duke. In a heated exchange on ABC's This Week, Republican vice presidential nominee Senator J.D. Vance defended former President Trump's claims about Venezuelan gangs in Aurora, Colorado. Host Martha Raddatz challenged Vance on Trump's remarks, which the city's Republican mayor called grossly exaggerated. Vance insisted there must be some element of truth to the claims, referencing Trump's rally where he labeled Aurora a, quote, war zone. Raddatz countered by pointing out that incidents involving gangs were limited to a few complexes and emphasized the effective response from law enforcement. Let's watch. The incidents were limited to a handful of apartment conflicts, uh, apartment complexes, and the mayor said our dedicated police officers have acted on those concerns. A handful of problems. Only, Martha, do you hear yourself? Only a handful of apartment complexes in America were taken over by Venezuelan gangs, and Donald Trump is the problem, and not Kamala Harris's open border? Americans are so fed up with what's going on, and they have every right to be. And I, I really find this exchange, Martha, sort of interesting because you seem to be more focused with nitpicking everything that Donald Trump has said, rather than acknowledging that apartment complexes in the United States of America are being taken over by violent gangs. So, look, I think the way Martha Raddatz framed it does make it easier to say that the media is trying to de uh, pretend this problem doesn't exist. You know, her line about just a few co apartment complexes being taken over. Right, it does sound like, well, that is an actual uh, problem. Now, this is a complicated situation. I dug into it. You've probably dug into it, here, it too. Let me describe what I think is going on, and, and then you can tell me to the extent to which you agree. <laughs> yeah, you can tell me why I'm wrong. So it, it looks like... Uh, there's a genuine dispute over whether the city has handled this badly or the management company has handled this badly. CBZ Management, who operates these couple complexes, has recently become active on social media. At least I think it's their Twitter account. I guess you can't tell absolutely for certain. I think it's them. They've said, yes, there's gang activity and it's unsafe for us, the management company, to be involved there. And you know the city's not really taking this seriously and we feel unsafe, so we're having nothing to do with it. And this is some kind of failing, which is playing into what Trump and Vance are saying. The city has kind of said, well, it, it's the management company has like left these properties to rot and they're, these people are living in squalor. They're not paying their rent anymore. There's like bugs and rodents everywhere. And yeah, there's some criminal activity and some gang activity. And indeed the city did arrest um, a couple people, but the gang is not like collecting rent or actually governing the apartment complexes. It's just they're very run down because the management company did a bad, bad job and now there's bad things going on there. So I think both of those things are not exactly in tension with each other, right? That maybe the police didn't do enough here and also the management company is like a out of out of town or out of state slumlord situation. Um, so I think it's fair to talk about. I, I, I do think Trump like characterizing all of Colorado or all of Aurora as like a Venezuelan gang war zone is in fact exaggerating. And you know, J.D. Vance can't be too mad that if you say something wild and exaggerated, I mean, he's gonna say, well, that's not exactly true for these reasons, but that there is certainly an underlying problem here. Yeah, I mean, I think the only part that you missed is that there are videos of the gangs going through the apartment complexes and breaking down people's doors and taking over their apartments and and uh, beating up some of the people who live there. And so even if they're not collecting rent, like do they still exercise some control over that complex since there's the threat of violence? Yeah, absolutely. And Trende Aragua has been a problem, not just in Aurora, Colorado, but in other places around the country, most notably New York City, where uh, f uh, I think it was like six months ago, we started hearing reports that they had these roving moped gangs where they were snatching people's cell phones and like punching people on the sidewalks. And then they would sell the uh, SIM cards from the cell phones to China, and then they would sell the actual cell mm. phone to other people who would you know, resell it for a cheaper price or what have you. So it was a sort of organized gang violence. And now recently there's been reports from uh, people, from law enforcement in New York City that say gang members as young as 11 years old are trying to take over places in Times Square and are similarly behaving as these roving yeah. gangs running through the migrant shelters and trying to exercise all kinds of control. And what a lot of people don't understand about the border is that 
when these gangs get into American cities and create these centralized locations, it's not just your typical gang member. So it's not someone who you process at the southern border and you see, okay, they might be a member of Trend Aragua, but anybody who comes across the southern border is essentially coming across with the permission of the cartel. And they owe their money to the coyotes who are part of the cartel. So if you pay $10,000, let's say, you don't have it in cash on you, you owe the cartel, you get into the United States, and inevitably you end up working in some capacity for one of these gangs all the money that you earn gets sent back mm. to the gang or to the cartel. So it's not just like this group of 15 individuals in Aurora, Colorado, but essentially every migrant that's coming through the border, if they're not paying up front, is working on behalf of the gang. So I think this problem is a lot more widespread than people realize. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, some libertarians would respond to that and say, well, that's why we need to have more legal immigration so that you short circuit the cartel's ability to control the process. And you know, when you criminalize something or outlaw something, you end up having uh, people who are going to resort to more desperate scary, dangerous, violent, uh, outwardly criminal measures to get in. And then, yes, maybe then they owe something to the cartel or they're beholden to them. And the best way to delegitimize drug cartels or trafficking cartels would be to just have a, a, a process that is, that is above board. You, say, you said, and you said a couple times, you know, taking over, like, yes, I've read those same stories. I agree and, and do think sometimes the mainstream media is far too dismissive of genuine crime problems that do exist in some of our cities. And you know, you can point to broad statistics like, well, crime has come down a little bit since the pandemic. That's good, sure. But people don't always feel, ex are not necessarily experiencing that if they're seeing a lot of disorder in their cities. DC, where we live, continues to have, um, it's not as bad as it was last year, but still a, a, a large number of disturbing incidents. I've witnessed just a couple of them just in yeah, the last few weeks. Yeah, crime is still significantly up yeah. since so these are, you know, these are problems that cities are not dealing with properly. And I, you know, and I don't necessarily believe them when they say, if the, if the police department or the mayor or who, in, any, in Aurora or anywhere else, if they say, oh yeah, there's no problem here, what, what are we just gonna believe the government official for saying there's no problem if they're taking care of it? And similarly, like in the New York Times write-up of Aurora, Colorado, you know, the headline is very strong about, you know, false claims. But then when you read the story, it was actually pretty good, I thought. It was pretty thorough in, in, in pointing out that there are some of these problems and that there's this dispute between the management company and it's a little bit less clear. So it's, it was way more confusing and also way more indicative of an actual underlying problem than the headline, which was just like, false, you'd be crazy to believe this. Yeah. Um I, I wanted to go back to go ahead. Well, I wanted to go back to what you said about the libertarian answer as boosting yeah. legal immigration. Bring them in legally. I don't know. I don't think we have enough time to get into <laughs> like that base level debate. If if I were to say one thing, I, it would just be that um, we thought that was going to happen with the legalization of marijuana, and yet the cartels still control a lot of the dispensaries in Colorado. Um, because the cartel doesn't just disappear. They find new ways to make money, right? They're innovative, they're, they're creative. They don't let something becoming legalized stop them from making money off of desperate people. And ultimately, we don't control what they're doing. Well, it's not legalized so, enough. It's just legalized there. We need to legalize it everywhere. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's but, why it's a debate show. Um, yes, of course. Um, we have but, to disagree sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would also say that this national security problem from illegal immigrants coming in and not being processed properly goes beyond, you know, Trend Aragua and Aurora, Colorado. We have uh, 10,000 plus uh, indicted murderers who have come into the United States since Biden and Harris took office. Mm -hmm. They've also lost 300,000 unaccompanied minor children, which is not a national security problem, but is obviously a humanitarian problem. And then in addition to people coming from Latin America, we also have Chinese nationals, people from uh, countries that are on the you know, the high levels of terror watch list suspects mm -hmm. coming in. This is all a serious problem and one that um, Americans are right to have a concern about. We even heard Bill Clinton on the campaign trail for Kamala Harris admitting that Lake and Riley probably wouldn't have been murdered if her killer had been processed mm -hmm. at the southern border because he had a prior criminal history and was even detained several times in the United States but kept being released because we have so many sanctuary cities that don't cooperate with immigration and customs enforcement to make sure that when people commit crimes, they are deported from the country. Um, and Lake and Riley is, is one of 
quite a few young women who have uh, suffered yeah. the same fate over the past few years. Just to you know, briefly respond to that, my understanding of what people on or more supportive of immigration have said about those statistics specifically is that there was some quibbling with those statistics, right? They're saying, well, not all of those people, just because they are like lost in this, what this was ISIS tabulating or something, does not mean they're not, some of them are in fact in different being held, being in prison, they're just not in prison for immigration-related things. So there's there was some confusion of the statistics. I don't have it exactly in front of me what that was. All right, more free media right after this.